everyone. I am Dr. Shiva Manoj. I have been working in the clinical research industry for the last 15 years. I have done my PhD from Kadi Sarva Vishwavidyalaya in the area of drug quantification and its application to clinical research studies. Clinical research is a research which is conducted in human beings. Hence, it is a little complex as well. Ethics in clinical research is one of the important aspects when a clinical research studies are conducted. In this module of Ethics in Clinical Research, we will touch upon the fundamentals of clinical research, the policy which is existing in India and throughout the globe regarding ethics in clinical research, and we will touch upon the history, the specific events in history which made those policies to be in the current state what we see. As we speak, ethics is one of the important area of concern throughout the globe when a clinical research studies are conducted. To get to more, know more about this, tuned into the module. Three modules for this particular topic, Ethics in Clinical Research, in which the module 1 we are going to discuss about history and fundamentals. In module 1, we will get to know more about the fundamentals and history of ethics in clinical research and what are the basic aspects of it. What was the major milestones of ethical development in history? So there were a couple of events which happened in the history which led to a strong policies, implementation of strong policies to ensure ethics in clinical research while conducting the study. So as I mentioned, the ethical guidelines were the outcome of many historical events of abuse and resulted in need of a regulator practice and that evolved over a period of time. The most notorious event which contributed building ethical standards are of which in America was an experiment in Turkis, Alabama, in which treatment was withheld for 400 African American men with syphilis so that scientists could study the cause of the disease. Various ethical guidelines were developed in the 20th century in response to such studies. So when you say 400 African American men were not given the treatment just to know how the progress of the disease so which is against the ethics so a couple of events which led to the strong policies are listed in the slide some of the influential codes of ethical and regulations that guide ethics in clinical research include the nuremberg code of 1947 it was the first international treatise on the ethics of research involving human being and highlighted the essentiality of obtaining voluntary consent. So what does voluntary consent means? If a patient or a human being getting involved into a clinical research, it has to be with his agreement, its willful agreement without any external force or a pressure. So these are the few of the incidents which happened 1932 to 72 as uh, we just mentioned the American experiment on syphilis, 1939 to 45 Nazi experiments which is done on Nazi uh, soldiers, 1944 to 74 human radiation experiments by US government, 1946 Nuremberg trial of doctors responsible for Nazi experiments and 1947, Nuremberg Code came in picture outlining the ethical principles required for research. And in 1948, United Nations adoption of Universal Declaration of Human Rights become a next step happened, ensuring ethics. Continuing to that, 1964, the World American Association formulated guidelines on conducting research on human, known as Declaration of Helsinki. This has undergone seven revisions with latest version of being issued in October 2013 at Fortaleza, Brazil. The next one is 1979 Belmont report released by the National Commission 
for the protection of human subjects for biomedical and biobehavioral research in the United States of America. For the first time, the three basic ethic principles of research involving human subjects got implemented. We will see what is those basic principles and what all are the aspects related to that in the upcoming slides. In 1980, it was the FDA, US FDA Food and Drug Administration Regulation, which is a code of for research as per US regulations got implemented. And 1982, Council of the International Organization for Medical Science, that is CIOMS, publication of the International Ethics Guidelines for Biomedical Research Involving Human Subjects. So by this you can see, at simultaneously or the consecutive time period, globally there were multiple laws and regulations or guidances were getting implemented uh, to ensure the clinical research ethics connected or evolved continuation to certain events so as i mentioned there were like different countries were implementing different policies to ensure that so there was a need for a uniform standard across the globe or at least including multiple countries to have a uniform practice so that is where the ich gcp which is international conference on harmonization bought good clinical practices in 1996 and it got revised almost after 20 years recently in 2016. So when I say it got revised after 20 years, you could see how concisely and precisely those guidelines were written and brought into practice, which led true or good for the last 20 years in clinical research. In 2001, the National Bioethics Advisory Committee bought some regulations connected to it and in 2016, CIOMS Geneva uh, in, uh, brought into practice in 2002 and got revised in 2016. And UNESCO uh, Universal Declaration on Bioethics on Human Rights got published in 2005. So these are the latest regulations and policies which got upgraded and which ensures the ethics in clinical research. At the end of the module, we will be giving the link for all these policies and procedures for you to go through in detail and understand more aspects. So that was the history through which the regulations got evolved. And now we talk about the fundamentals of ethics. In 1976, the Belmont report released by the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research in the United States of America, for the first time enunciated the three basic ethics principles which is a must to be followed when a human is getting involved into the clinical research or clinical trials. The first one is respect for person. So what do we mean by respect for person? You respect their opinion or their agreement to be part of the clinical trial or the clinical study or not to be part of the clinical trial at any point in time. So initially, when the studies start, they can take a decision to be part of the study or not to be part of the study. But if they have taken a decision to be part of the study and as the study progresses, if they feel uncomfortable or they don't want it to be involved in the study at any time during the study, they can withdraw their consent and they can move out from the clinical study without any other force. So that's what is meant by respect for person. So we should not make anyone forcefully part of a clinical research study. The second one is beneficence. That is, what is the benefit out of getting involved into the study? If it's not benefit, at least it should not do a, any harm to the human being. The research which is getting conducted should not bring harm to the human being. So. So there will be a benefit and a risk assessment which will happen when a, a clinical trial is conducted and that will be informed to the patient or a subject who is getting involved to study that these are the benefit and these are the risk and this is what we expect out of the study. The third one is justice. In case if there is a risk happened or if there is an uh, outcome which is not favorable to the uh, human being involved in the study, there should be a mechanism in place which ensures justice to the trial participant. 
This has evolved through multiple stages with the events in history and it has been very very clearly laid down in the current state what is the responsibilities of the team who is conducting the clinical research and what is what all the rights and responsibilities of the patient who is getting involved into the clinical studies so as i mentioned there was a common standard which brought upon because every country was having their own regulations which is called as ICH GCP good clinical practices so what all the good practices to be followed when a clinical trial is conducted so it mentions in detail about each stakeholder's responsibility which we will see in detail in the upcoming modules and the additional reason is to have an increased ethics and ethical awareness to all of them even to the participant and the clinical research team improve the trial methods clinical trial concept better understood why are we doing the study what is the benefit what is the risk those questions are asked multiple times to ensure we are doing a clinical trial with a better understanding so gcp bought that standards while conducting a clinical trial and public and political concern over safety aspect which is a fundamental aspect when a human being is involved in clinical study and any frauds or accident if it happens during the study how it can be handled so that is also important detail with these regulations so as per ICH GCP good clinical practice a clinical trial should be conducted in accordance with ethical principles sound scientific evidence and clear detailed protocol so it has to be clearly defined up front what is that we are going to do with the study the benefit of conducting trial should be outweigh the risk the right safety and well-being of trial participants are the paramount importance and these should be presented by obtaining an informed consent and maintaining confidentiality so the right safety and well-being of the patient will be kept as an important factor and the full information will be provided to the patient who is getting involved into the study the care must be taken given by the appropriately qualified personnel with adequate experience and all the records should be easily accessible and retrievable for accurate reporting verification and interpretation so every aspect of the study which is getting conducted should be recorded and the records should be easily accessible for any of the regulatory authority or any of the authority to check investigational product should be manufactured according to good manufacturing practices so any product which we are using as part of the clinical trial should be manufactured as per good manufacturing practices so these are the basic standards which good clinical practices ensures or demands when conducting a clinical trial will have more details regarding the good clinical practices and ethical principles in the upcoming module thank you